House Weber of Coldmoat is a noble house from Coldmoat in the Reach. Sworn to House Rowan, their lands used to border those of House Osgrey, with their main castle of Coldmoat once being the primary seat of the Osgreys, with it being their ancestral home. Their banner is a black field with a spotted spider on a silver web, with their words currently not known as of a dance with dragons. It appears by the time of the main books, House Weber has fallen from their once high position, no longer holds Coldmoat, or perhaps any lands at all in Westeros. The castle of Coldmoat was located less than two leagues away from House Osgrey's newer seat of Stanfast had granulated outer walls standing exactly 33 feet high, with towers at each of its corners. It's a highly defensible castle, as it's surrounded by a moat that encircles the castle by 211 AC. By 211 AC, the waters of the nearby Chequi River were dammed, with part of the water being used to keep the moat filled even during the harshest drought conditions. Due to the fact that Cold Moat once belonged to and was built by House Osgrey. The Lion of House Osgrey is carved into checkered squares in the stone above Coldmoat's Gate and can be seen throughout the castle. However, in some places it has been replaced by Weber iconography. The key difference is the Weber iconography looks fairly new, but the Osgreys has borne down by the elements over the centuries. Within Coldmoat's yard are kennels, stables, a smithy, and a seven-sided wooden step with windows of leaded glass. The audience chamber of the Webbers is decorated with tapestries of battles and tourneys, and the stone floors are carved with rushes. Coldmoat also contains a maester's tower. The castle can support 20 times as many small folk as Stanfast, the nearby holding of House Osgrey. The landscape near Coldmoat contains fields of barley, wheat and corn, as well as six orchards of apples, apricots and pears. The Webbers are proud of their horse breeding as well, and have become very well known for it, with Weber horses held in high regard by knights and lords across Westeros and even the eastern parts of Essos. Much of the early history of House Weber is not yet known, but we do know a lot more about their recent history after they took possession of Coldmoat and the former Osgrey lands. We know a Lord Renyard Weber once ruled Coldmoat during the time of Sir Eustace Osgrey's father. He was presumably followed by Lord Wyman Weber, who was among those fighting in the Battle of the Red Grass Field, staying loyal to House Targaryen and King Daeron II. It was during that battle that Lord Wyman's daughter, Roran's first husband, was killed. By the time of the second Duncan Egtel, Wyman had died and his daughter, Roran, was now Lady of Coldmoat. By far the most interesting member of House Weber is Lady Roran Weber herself, who does play a vital role in the second Duncan Egg story, The Sworn Sword. She would become known to lords and commons alike as the Red Widow, given how many times she was widowed over her life and her famous red hair. She was Lady of Coldmoat and head of House Weber during the reign of King Ares I Targaryen. It is made clear in the text that Lady Roran was very short, approximately 4 feet 11, slim, and had strawberry blonde red hair and grey green eyes. She had a dimpled chin, a snub nose, and freckles. Rowan usually kept her hair bound in a braid that reached down to her thighs, and she frequently played with it while entertaining her guests in her hall. Rowan tried to appear ferocious to other lords and knights, and gained a fierce reputation within the reach and the local area as a result. She enjoyed archery and was said to be very talented at it. During her childhood, Rowan was said to be fond of the young Adam Osgrey, who served as her father, Wyman's page, and later squire at Coldmoat. He was the son of Sir Eustace Osgrey, whose family lands House Weber now controlled. The two had an innocent romance, though it is said that they supposedly never went past a few kisses. Because of this relationship, Adam's father, Sir Eustace Osgrey, proposed that they marry, making both Adam and Rowan happy and settling the lingering land dispute between the two families. But Lord Wyman refused him. Instead, Rowan was married to a different squire of her father's. During the first Blackfire Rebellion, her father and her husband fought in the Battle of the Red Grass Field in 196 AC on the side of House Targaryen, while Adam and House Osgrey fought on the side of the Blackfires. Rowan's husband, 12 years old at the time, was slain in battle, and she became a widow for the first time at the age of 10. Adam also died during the battle, which caused a deep-rooted resentment and grudge against Sir Eustace by Rowan. At the age of 13, Rowan was married again to a 54-year-old man, who soon after their marriage died of a chill. Six months after his death, she gave birth to their son, who was weak and died within three days. Her third husband, Sir Simon Staunton, choked to death on a chicken bone, while her fourth husband, Sir Rollard Uffering, died during the Great Spring Sickness. Rowan did bear a daughter by either her third or fourth husband, 
but the girl did not live a year, and it said the death of her daughter caused Rowan great sorrow. Because of the unfortunate deaths of her husbands and children, Rowan gained the name the Red Widow, given the red spider on House Weber's banner the amount of times a woman so young had been widowed, and of course, her striking red hair. The small folk accused her of poisoning her husbands and being a witch who sold her unborn babies to the Lord of the Seven Hells. Before his death, Lord Wyman attempted to marry Rowan to his Castilian, Sir Lucas Itchfield, but she refused him. As such, Wyman stated in his will that Rowan had two years to marry after his death and that if she would remain unwed, Coldmoat and all its attached lands and wealth would be granted to her cousin, Sir Wendell Webber. On his deathbed, Rowan's father charged Lucas to scare off unworthy suitors, though in the two years that would follow, Lucas would attempt to scare off all travellers to Coldmoat. Lucas's behaviour, in addition to the rumours concerning the deaths of Rowan's four husbands and the two children who had died, caused the number of suitors to be much lower than would have been expected based on her beauty and status. But she did still have several suitors. Among them were Clayton Caswell and Simon Laygood both rather persistent, and Sir Gerald Lannister, the younger brother to Lord of Casterly Rock, who sent her flattering letters from Casterly Rock, but whom Rowan did not believe to be willing to leave the Westerlands and his position at his brother's seat. Lady Rowan continued to rule Coldmoat into 211 AC, the setting of the second Duncan Egg short story, the Swan Sword. By this time, she only had until the new moon to marry, in order to keep her seat and lands, which looked as if they'd be passing to her cousin. When her small folk built a small dam on the Checky Water, a nearby river, Sir Benis of the Brown Shield, working for Eustace Osgray, assaulted one of her workers. Sir Duncan the Tall, the renowned hedge knight and future legendary commander of the King's Guard of Aegon V, came to Coldmoat on behalf of Eustace Osgray to pay the blood price. But Rowan rejected this offer. Lady Rowan brought a small force to the Checky Water, where she was confronted by Duncan, Eustace, and Duncan's squire Egg, who was secretly Prince Aegon Targaryen. Later, King Aegon V. She accepted a trial by battle, choosing Sir Lucas Itchfield as her champion to fight Eustace's champion, Duncan. Lucas Itchfield was killed in the trial, however, and the valour of Duncan reconciled Eustace and Rowan. Rowan visited Adam Osgray's grave at Stamfast, and when she began to weep, Eustace comforted her. They married the next day, allowing Rowan to keep Coldmoat. Many in the Reach viewed this marriage as simply a political move by allowing Rowan to keep her position and Eustace to return to his ancestral home of Coldmoat, while also ending the dispute over the water supply. During Duncan the Tall's attempts to defuse the feud between Eustace and Rowan, both developed a certain affection towards each other. When Duncan woke up after nearly being killed in the trial by combat and found Rowan had married Eustace and that she had never visited him while recovering, Duncan was said to have felt rejected. On the day he left Coldmoat, Rowan tried to offer Duncan a place as a captain of her guard, but he refused the offer. She then offered him one of her famous horses to give him something to remember her by, but Duncan refused this as well. At the conclusion of their argument, they kissed passionately, and Duncan cut off her famous braid to keep to remember her by. However, she did also gift a young palfrey to Duncan's young squire, Egg, which he went on to eventually name Rain. After the death of Sir Eustace Osgrey, sometime between 211 and 219 AC, Rowan went on to marry Lord Gerald Lannister, who was one of her primary suitors before the events of the Swan Sword. By this time, after the death of his brother, Gerald was now the Lord of Castle Rock. The two had four sons, twins, Tywald and Tion, Titus and Jason Lannister. This would mean that Rowan was the grandmother of Lord Tywin, Sir Kevin, Girion, Sir Tygert, Lady Jenna, Lady Joanna, Sir Stefford and Damon Lannister, and thus the great-grandmother of Jamie Lannister, Cersei Lannister and Tyrion Lannister. Lady Rowan disappeared under very mysterious circumstances in 230 AC, less than a year after giving birth to Jason. There is no indication of her fate or what truly happened to her. Some suspect she died, some that she was killed, others that she ran away, maybe to be with some secret lover. The final fate of House Webber is not yet known, and it's not clear who Rowan's lands passed to, either after she married Lord Gerald or after her disappearance. It is possible they may have passed to a distant Webber cousin, perhaps Wendell Webber, or his descendants. It's even possible Colmoat is now under the control of a different house altogether. What we do know is a sellsword with the wind blown, who is decorated with spider tattoos, much like that of the banner of House Webber, is said to nurse a claim to lost lands in Westeros. It is speculated that this could refer to House Webber and Coldmoat.